<laughs> couldn't, couldn't keep the serious face for very long. Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to the Unrelenting Live Stream. I'm your host, Alexander Pascal, and joining me today, Selena Halper. Hi. Yes, it's going to be an awesome stream. We're going to be talking about animation features that are coming in 4.15. Uh, but first, it's the news. All right, so first things up. Um, Unreal Engine Marketplace got an update for January. Um, as you know, we always do these one month behind, so uh, here's all the stuff that showed up in January. Uh, you can see that there's quite a few new uh, UI graphics packs, 2D assets, animations, etc. Um, come out, check out the blog post. It's up here on unrealengine.com slash blog. You'll see it up there near the top. Um, really great. Oh yeah, the graffiti decals. That is super slick. Um, it's like really great stuff. Neofur's got a sci-fi pack. Uh, if you're already familiar with their packs, you know that they have really awesome stuff. So check out these other assets they've put in. Um, this is actually one of my favorite genres of music. So check out the new synthwave music and look at all this. Like tons of new music, tons of new plugins. Whoops, didn't mean to fly past that. Okay, oh, it's not me, uh, Clint. We need a new mouse. This mouse wheel is actually a little busted, and I'm not I'm not touching it right now. It is doing that on its own. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to control it. I'm, I'm controlling it again. Okay, so here's some more prop packs. There it goes. Um, uh, ambient sound effects music, um, new material and texture packs, uh, and of course, we always like to throw in some weapons for good measure. Um, but yeah, check out all the new assets that are up on the marketplace. This Oh my gosh, this mouse is going everywhere. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I, every now and then the... Okay, maybe I, I'll, I'll do that. That's a good suggestion, Clint. Keyboard it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, next up, up here on the uh, showcase section of the uh, <coughs> Unreal Engine website, you can check out a new showcase on Tekken 7. Um, if you're not familiar with all the new fighting games that have been coming up, and uh, basically anything out of Japan, actually, um, is made in Unreal Engine, so the new Street Fighter, the Mortal Kombat games, Injustice, even, is UE3, um, and then... Um, Guilty Gear is UE4 also, but Tekken 7 uh, is a great UE4 title. They've got a bunch of uh, awesome details in this interview that's down here. Um, just check out the article. You'll see a lot of behind-the-scenes details. Uh, if you're familiar with our showcases, then you already know that it's a great way to get insight and how AAAs do um, what they do and how they get great results. Um, those particle effects are stunning. Uh, just for that alone, come check them out. Um, really great article. Next up, um, oh, well, that adjusted itself ever so slightly. So, uh, right, on Polycount, they've recently given out the Green Tooth Awards. I'll scroll back up to the top here. But the Green Tooth Awards went out. Oh, I used the mouse wheel and it started going on its own. And uh, we can see uh, there's actually uh, some really great winners in here, uh, i.e. us. <laughs> a little bit of a brag there. It's, uh, we've got Unreal Engine here, uh, won an Exceptional Software Award, which is really great. Uh, and just next to that, Epic Games got an Exceptional Studio Award. Thank you so much to the people over at Polycount. Yay! <laughs> 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 um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, thanks to everyone here that worked so hard. Lena, great work. That's that Thank one you. right there. You, you too. Hey. And Clint. Yeah, thanks. Good work, everybody. <laughs> little. Yeah, good work. So, um, yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, just wanted to bring that one to your attention. If you're not familiar with the Green Tooth Awards over at Polycount, check them out. There's a lot of great studios and software in here too, um, not just us. But wanted to bring attention to it and say thank you to those folks. Uh, all right. Um, uh, last news item I wanted to bring up is a shout out where I don't have a picture for a thing because there's no picture for it. Um, Clint, if you want to just jump the camera back real fast and then we'll jump into this. So. Um, there is actually now an Unreal Stream team. So we've put together with, uh, let's see, it's like Celeste and Luos and, and a bunch of people, um, a bunch of people out there in the community that you all know, have uh, gotten together and um, I'm trying to give them as much official backing as I can. And uh, what we're doing is we're hosting a lot of people and if you are a live streamer, you should uh, get in contact with Celeste or um, who also goes by Panda Studios or Cell Plays, by the way, uh, or myself or anybody else over here, and they'll eventually get you in contact with the right people. But if you get in contact with us, um, I'd really love to, you know, 
get more people onto the team, talk to you all about uh, scheduling streams where Unreal Engine can host you actually streaming your development. And uh, that can help you guys build up uh, your audiences. And uh, in turn, it gives us great content to provide to you, the viewers, who come onto our channel just to see, you know, what's, what's up, what's new, and uh, who's making something, like, live. But I uh, just wanted to throw that out there, and uh, a big thank you to everyone on that team. Um, you'll be seeing them all over the place and uh, hosted after this also. And, um, yeah, this, just want to give them a big shout-out. Uh, all right, Clint, let's, let's hop back over to the main screen and uh, get on to our Community Spotlight. So, Community Spotlight this week starts us off in Answer Hub. Um, I'm going to refresh it really fast because every now and then you guys like to come in and do a bunch of cool stuff and help people and get points last minute. But uh, looks like, yep, uh, top of the charts today uh, is Mons Olympus with 213, Project Geist, and Stubo. Uh, you will all be getting badges, or if you don't, or if you already have badges and this is your third time or more, you'll have a prestige badge. Um, Project Geist, I think you might have one. Stubbo, I don't think you have one yet at all, but don't worry, you'll get them. Um, and everybody else on this list as well gets a shout out. Uh, Black Phoenix, uh, thank you so much. BP Andrew, I saw you trying really hard on Twitter. You were, you were posting updates as you were getting up here. You know, maybe next time, but uh, thank you so much for, for trying very hard. Um, Razio is up here. Uh, Tamfoy. Shadow River, I don't think there's been a week where your name hasn't been on here somewhere. Um, Esed, thank you. Uh, and Vector, I hope I said that one right. It's a little bit, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Vector. But uh, thank you all so much for coming out to answers.unreligion.com and providing help to each other and to everyone out in the community. Uh, it's a great way to get yourself known and also to earn the forum badge. So, uh, thank you all. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> You're My so job. excited. My job. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, let's see. Now then, the spotlight items. Uh, first things up, um, Patim, Patty M, maybe. Uh, Patty M has posted uh, a really interesting random maze generator tutorial. Uh, this is just the first image of it because I found it here on the forums, but it leads back to uh, this Voxagon blog spot uh, and. Um, if you're wondering how to get to these, by the way, they are uh, either posted in the description after everything's done, or um, uh, actually, yeah, that's the best way to get to them is the YouTube link, or you can go on the forums and come find them uh, using the titles here if you go to forums.unreligion.com. But uh, so, yeah, this is a really cool tutorial, and, um, and I think if I'm understanding this correctly, it is sort of a tutorial for... Um, uh, basically, Patium made a marketplace item, and it looks like it's just a tutorial to create the whole thing if you wanted. Um, but it is a random maze generator that takes all those basic concepts of you have a grid, it finds blocks that are next to other blocks, it determines whether or not it should put a block or a space there based on parameters that you set up. But uh, this tutorial style is so nice, and I had to show off. This is so cool. I love the uh, very bubbly... Um, properly chunked off pieces of information. It's very clean, very well organized. Um, and it's also rather long. You can see it's going to take me a while to scroll through the whole thing. I'm not going to do it. But uh, <laughs> but it's really awesome tutorial, and it's very well structured. A and um, even if it's not that you need a maze in your game, but if you ever thought about writing a tutorial, I would recommend this tutorial as a tutorial on how to write tutorials. Uh, so that was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, awesome job, Patty M. Uh, next up, uh, Ali Akbar uh, sent me a update to this. Now, you might have seen this before, Landscape Architect. Uh, it's his pet project he's been working on quite a bit. It's really fun. S uh, but I wanted to show he's, he's made massive strides in it, and we've actually spotlighted it before. But uh, he showed me this, and I, I said, okay, like I absolutely need to show this one off. Uh, now he has the runtime deformable terrain uh, with tessellation. See that? Look at that, it's, it's incredible. Looks great, cool. very cool, and uh, this looks super like hyper realistic on top of the runtime editing like that. Wow. And you can and you can really see like it's performant too, like you yeah. you're not seeing a frame drop at all. So uh, excellent work. Highly recommend everyone come check out Landscape Architect. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, next item on here. Uh, physical water surface. Um, Oh, 
You know what? I was wrong. This was the marketplace item that has the full tutorial. The other one was just a tutorial. So physical water surface. There is a physical water surface marketplace item uh, made by Theo Coles. Sorry, I'd gotten those two mixed up. Um, and in here is actually a complete breakdown of, of how to make not just a water surface that looks nice, but uh, one that is physically based and has floating objects in it. And uh, you can see here, it's like working out all of the um, collision and how to properly make something look like it's floating. A lot of details, a lot of information. But uh, in the end, you end up with, um, whoop, I'm gonna scroll way back up here. In the end, you end up with some really high quality um, uh, little bits of, see, there you go. Very high quality looking, um, physically based uh, floating. And it's very, very realistic. And uh, awesome that he, he put all this up here just to share. So um, those are a couple of great tutorials, a really cool project. Uh, just wanna show off all those for our spotlight. And uh, make sure you come out and check them out. This one is on the wiki, by the way. If you go to wiki.unreligion.com or you can go on the marketplace and just buy the whole thing outright made for you. Um, so there you go. Those are our community spotlights for the day. And next up, we have this presentation. I'm going to make this one full screen. There we go. No, you got to go first screen. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There you oh, go. Ah, whoopsie. Hi. Here, I'm going to pass this over to you, Lena. Now, you're here to show us off some really cool, uh, really cool new features in 415 that you've uh, got loaded up on here, too. Yes. Now, um, these, uh, these are brand spanking new. You can get them in the preview build to try out bump around in and give us your feedback. But uh, yeah. what are these? <laughs> so this is the features for uh, the UE415. Um, and we we have big changes, but it's not, yeah, it's sometimes not clear, so I just want to explain what they are. The first one is pretty simple. The, the first one is uh, the animation blending in mm -hmm. the sequencer, which was actually somebody asked me last time when I was on, mm -hmm. and I said, yeah, we are going to have that. And, <laughs> and, <then I laughs> and Alex <laughs> was not sure if yeah, I can let's, say let's that. Let's be sure that it is 100% it. And yeah, you, you called me out on it and said, oh, it is. It, it, is. it is coming. And here it is. Yeah, it is coming. So this was uh, asked so many times. Basically, before you could only have one animation in the track, but now you can have a multiple animation and mm -hmm. you can blend each other. And if I explain a little bit, you can have multiple full body animations with weight. Um, it's going to normalize if it's more than one. You can have as many as, as ed additive animations. Um, and because of that, we added this special node called Blend Multi. It just will sound weird, but the idea is that you have uh, multiple pods coming in and you can give the alpha value of mm -hmm. that, and then it produces some pods. Um, so you can use this node for s your stuff, but basically the sequencer now have it. And if I show you just quick demo yeah. of that. Um, and we're in 415 preview four right here uh, yes. when we're showing this off. So, so um, nothing you wouldn't have access to at home. Yes, you can download it right now. <laughs> and uh, if I just show you quick how this works, um, you can just do create a sequencer. You can add a mannequin like I have here. You can add animation, and mm -hmm. you can say say <coughs> you have a idle animation, mm -hmm. and say here somewhere you can say like I want to have a, a run animation, right? Oh, it's fine. It there you go. Yeah, you can just yeah. actually. That's wow. That's easy. You just drag it down in case yeah. if you put it in the wrong slot. Yeah, uh, actually, it, this is very cool. Like the sequencer did, team mm -hmm. did a great job to. But for some reason, I cannot really select this guy. But anyway, so the idea is uh, now you can do this. Right now, it's blending half and half, which mm -hmm. might not be the best. It's going to look a little strange. Just suddenly yeah. cutting to half and half. Yeah. Uh, just a second, because I think of something is weird. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening when I'm trying to show something. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's live. You know, something always happens a little funny. Yeah, something. Will, why does this see you now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I'm wherever your marker is, I yeah, think. It spawns I, yeah, in. There I, it, I yeah, that's it. That's what it is. I figured that's what it is. <laughs> but, so say, like, but the... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully this works still. Let me see. So 
here the way you wait so it, right now in bit here it's blending between half and half only mm -hmm. which might not be you what, we, what you want you want from here to going there slowly right yeah to like lerp into yeah, it yeah lerp into it mm -hmm. and to do that oh to do that you can do that by adding weight in between and adding weight usually comes to the if you open this animation section you have a weight value so you can say mark here mm -hmm. but for some reason it's marked i really messed up this one somehow <laughs> <laughs> because it's not marking to my point so right it's something um yeah oh no right it's weird um, i don't know what i did i somehow created a bug with it <laughs> so this is very weird i never i haven't seen it <laughs> i tried to okay it's very weird. I'm sorry about that. I'll try one more time, if not. But the idea is the weight is uh, what's gonna... Mm -hmm. I'm trying the second time. Hopefully it'll work. If it's not, never mind. <laughs> what would the... Uh, so what would the expected results be then? So the... I sh Try this again. If we, this doesn't work, maybe they just. Uh, but I tried this in the. Yeah, it should wait in this corner. Right there. To zero. Yeah. Ah. So see. it should be zero here. Yeah. So it should do that. But let me. S I think it's uh, somehow I s triggered some kind of weird bug between them. And there's a good chance that if this is something that you fixed in main, this is an older thing. That's no, I actually out. downloaded the sequence to 4.15 yesterday, and I tried it. Oh so. no. So this is, yeah, this is kind of unusual, I, I thought, but you can control weight by this way. So right now it's, uh, it's nothing, nobody has to wait because uh, I set both so of them to be zero. So it's a left push, but yeah. now you can go back saying, I want wait on this one. Mm. Yeah, and then it's slowly getting there. Uh, it's, this point are uh, somehow skilled. I think that's uh, what happening. Oh, somehow this is skewed. I know what it is. <gasps> oh, it's the it's bug. the oh, it's the UI thing that we oh, this is oh actually my God, I'm sorry. oh, I know what happened. Okay, everyone at I'm home, so sorry. Ev we both just realized what it is at the same time. Oh. We had scaled up the UI, and I said that you know maybe a couple hit boxes will be off. We scaled up the UI so it's easier for everyone at home to read. This is bug with the scale. Yeah, but unfortunately, oh my God. this system as it is new <laughs> wasn't designed for that scale. So, so that's oh my why. god, this is what's happening. I was Look, like, it's if it's in the perfect location. It is. I was like, I tried. It this was it was really us yesterday. trying to make it more legible for the s for the uh, video yeah. at home. Oh my god, because I, I yeah, I <laughs> was like, it's for some reason it's not working properly. So it's it's this working I, now. You know, everyone can blame me for that because I was like, oh, let's just make it so it's more legible. And oh my god, <laughs> totally so yeah, forgot this bug is now this that, is uh, not working. That since since the collision on this track hasn't been set up to scale properly yet. Uh, it wasn't expecting that. Okay, so yeah. So that's experimental things uh, are experimental. Oh my god, yeah. So this is what's happening now. So now the weight is the here. The top one is weight is one. The bottom one is the zero. And now, so there's nothing there. And up to here, there's nothing. And here it goes. You're going to see the weight transition in between one animation to second animation. So you can do this. <laughs> yes, that was I'm just perfect. saying you can do this. I'm like, I... I did this yesterday? <laughs> I don't understand what happened today. <laughs> it's all right. Everyone in chat is giving me a hard time for it. Oh. It's like, oh, of course, Alex. You should and have also known. Like you can add an additive on top of it. So yeah, there's a long animation, but this I created this additive that's kind of like a happy a little bit. It might not be easy to see, but. And we can just zoom into him a little bit more, maybe. A little yeah, far maybe. away from him. Yeah, it's a little there you far. go. So this I love that F key focus zoom. Yeah. So good. If you look at it, it's a little bit of like a hopping going up. <laughs> so you can see like. Oh, that was like a, uh, yeah, it, it's like it's a horror edited. movie thing. Yeah, this is like an like editive animation. So you can, oh, no, no, stop. I didn't mean that play. I meant this play. So you see like it goes up. So mm -hmm. you can do any editive on top <coughs> of it. You can edit multiple stuff. So and you can control weight by this one. You can even do like zero to whatever and you can do that so anyway this worked oh my <laughs> god <laughs> so uh, don't do that next time <laughs> yeah note note to self okay. yeah, note to self it's not just the no, that'll happen with uh, um, some things in UMG editor as well
Okay, so any UI is now working great. Okay. <laughs> I so mean, it's possibly now working great. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so it took longer than I expected, but anyway, that's the feature. Next one. <laughs> So this one is a blend space editor change. Now it looks very sleek and fancy and sweet. Yeah, so that is a nice, nice menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the McLaren of menus, basically. It's very slick. It, uh, it looks a lot, before it looked like a um, very, you know, same, but this looks pretty fancy. So all big changes. So sample editing is better. Drag and drop operation is better. It gives you lots of like uh, um, editing options and it's user friendly. Only change that might confuse people is the preview change. Mm, that you have to hold shift uh, mm. to move around? Yes. So oh. the preview change is the one that confuses people because before what, what it did was whenever I move my mouse, mm -hmm. it changed the preview point to my mouse. So whenever I do that, it was just showing different animation. The problem with that is uh, if you want to click something else out here, then oh. your mouse, mouse point always here. Yeah. Because you're trying to move out, right? I can so see how that'd be frustrating. Yeah, it was a little annoying. So what we did was now you have to click the shift key, hold the key, mm -hmm. then it, that green point is your preview point. Oh, okay. So it moves with mm -hmm. you, right? So you can place anywhere you want that. However, first time when you open, it might confuse you. Yeah. So just make sure, click the shift key to change your mouse point. That's a great note. And that actually did happen to me when I was preparing for this stream and oh, I had opened you? it up and I did that exact thing where I went in there and eventually a tooltip popped up that said something about holding shift and then yeah. uh, totally, but I felt silly for a bit. But yeah, good note. Uh, it will blend in a little bit unless you hit shift. Yeah, people, I, I get the question a lot. So <laughs> now shift key, you can just do this and you can change it. And if you want to preview this way, that's not pretty. So <laughs> go here. <laughs> do that. Also, there's an option like <coughs> this. You can see the triangulation if you want to and it handles a lot better with the uh, invalid samples before with the invalid samples like uh, there's no point right but you still can do like this kind of behavior a little bit mm -hmm. it does uh, the um, distance base sampling so it does a different sampling when it's invalid point before it didn't look good mm -hmm. but now it, lo it works better S and all the options are in the detail panel now in the left corner so you can change the values and stuff Oh, wow. So yeah, and like you said, now that you can just press shift, leave it wherever you want, you yeah. can see it here. And I mean, you could say, right here, I like this, bake this out into something, right? Yeah, like yeah, you can do that, actually. Yeah. You can do like here, so and then I want to say, like, I oh, want to record the animation. Asset. Oh, that's, oh, wow. I, I yeah, or you can do that, or like you can just do record it, or you can do stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, you, or could, you, can, you can find that it right And then you can blend. move it. <laughs> yeah. Once you record it, you can move stuff, so you can create the animation. Yeah. I mean. Well, so. based on the blending and moving through the blends. Yeah. That's, wow. Yeah. That is really extensive uh, stuff you can do just in the editor. Yay. Yeah, it's really you good. Know, <laughs> it's yeah. a you know, uh, did this one. <laughs> yeah, but he did a lot of work on this oh, one. Oh, who did yeah. this one? You. You. Yeah. Oh, oh you're, uh, you're Debar? Yeah. Yeah, we had him on before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took me a while to get used to pronouncing his name. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, yeah. Because <laughs> he's uh, Dutch, and yes. then he's, yeah, so. Yeah. I can only imagine the, the language barrier between Dutch and Korean. And yeah. Then uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, he's, yeah. The name was completely most difficult, but anyway. <laughs> um, so that's the blend space improvement, a big change. Uh, after that, it's pretty quick, but something might be, um, new so i want to explain this the pose snap shot so the name is a little weird but the idea is you capture the any pose mm -hmm. of current scatter mesh it's the current component you just capture their pose by name and then you can use the pose to do stuff so that sounds kind of weird it's uh, almost like a cache pose in the animation system where you can catch the pose or oops <laughs> Don't click that. <laughs> you can catch the pose of a current component. And then you use that pose in the animation to blend with uh, something else. So mm -hmm. the example <coughs> I mentioned here is the, um, you can do the animation. You can do like a regular. So somebody's like a falling. Mm -hmm. And then you want to recover from falling. Yeah. You can actually capture the pose. Mm -hmm. And you can use the pose to blend into another animation. So it's uh, a lot nicer way of doing it because you 
could you try that with uh, physics blending before? Mm -hmm. The issue with the physics blending is that there's always a conflict with the physics trying to do something and animation system trying to do something. And, and you then get some jittery, yeah. weird thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that we had uh, uh, we've we've brought it up on the 415 preview with um, Michael Nolan, where we talked about it briefly. That it was sort of built for yeah, the ragdoll dying to standing back up because otherwise you have the weird jump to this yeah. standing up animation and stuff. Um, and I, I'd heard, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that Aurora in Paragon, her freeze ability also uses this system because when she freezes people, they stop and then they can continue they where... Continue. Yeah, they have to continue from wherever they were stopped from, so they just use this to create that's actually, yeah, the good actual example. freeze. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's a good example. Like, you just capture their pose by name and in any moment, and we just do uh, our huge that. that with the blending with animation or something else, which is great use case. So I think it's awesome. I didn't know the Aura was using it. Yeah, that's what they were uh, talking to me about the other day. I was like, that's yeah. incredible. So yeah, when she she uh, she has the ice thing where all the anyone who gets hit stops mid animation. That's cool. And that's how they're capturing it, so they can just keep them going from wherever they were. Yeah. So the issue, yeah, physics uh, it's a difficult issue because uh, physics is one update also your position and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you use physics to blending system, it just gets very com complicated. So this is very simple system that lets you do a lot more than um, uh, physics blending or any other blending. Yeah, so it's cool. So next one is uh, linking curved to the uh, to joint. Mm -hmm. And why would you want to do that? Because <laughs> like, why would you want to link a curve to the joint? Um, it's two cur certain curves because um, when especially you do facial animation, complicated animation, you have uh, so many curves and you don't want to have them all the time. So you want to kind of uh, cut out certain curves, like a facial curves. You don't want to um, like do that when you are really far away, right? It's the same thing at the joint, like uh, you don't want to handle them. So it's for large system, ROD, and it's for layer blending also. In the case where if you have like a face a facial animation and then body animation doing separate thing and curves coming in from both directions mm -hmm. and you want to figure out how to resolve this blending and yeah. that's what this is. It is a little complicated concept and it is the advanced feature but it, it is very powerful if you are doing retro facial animation. Um, it's very cool. So the example is this case where, <laughs> I know, this is <laughs> the funny. The Pinocchio. I know, uh, Pinocchio. And Pinocchio curve disappeared at a, a certain point. Basically, the reason the right side is uh, useful is it shows what curve is uh, being evaluated right now. Mm -hmm. And it you, s you can see it goes away. And it so it's optimization, but also you can use it for layer blending to dictate which joint drives this curve, uses this curve. Um, next one is uh, modify curve value by name. Um, before, you couldn't really override the curve value from any graph, but now you can do it using this system. You can choose which curve, which the value, mm -hmm. and you can override it in the any curve. Do you, uh, do you know any examples of where we'd be using that? Uh, I guess like uh, I've seen this a lot, like uh, um, in the Pentagon, we have a hero who uses certain materials, mm -hmm. and you want to say, I don't care unless this is true. I don't really want to use this curve at all, no matter what, because the issue is the curves are baked into animation system, right? Yeah. And sometimes they import certain curves uh, by accident. So mm. the curve value comes up and changes the value of a material. <laughs> oh, okay. So sometimes you just want to say like, I don't care. I just want to do this curve for um, only for this case. Or if you want, you can make some kind of like in-game feature where like you are the one driving curve value mm -hmm. because the curve is driving both targets and materials. So if you want to say like, I want to drive this material, but from this curve, then you can do that here. Oh, wow. So any graph now animation asset contains all the curves, but you can also drive that curve value if mm -hmm. you want to. Okay, so it's very dynamic now. Yeah, cool. it's more flexible. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much it for the uh, thing. It's not long. It's a pretty <laughs> quick, but um, yep, yep. That's uh, I mean, that's kind of the gist of the gist of all the bits in it. We do have uh, quite a few questions off of yeah. the forms. Oh, that was really nice 
that was very nice, Clint. Very classy. I liked it. Um, so yeah, we actually do have quite a few questions. And uh, anyone who's watching live, of course, on Twitch, we take your questions live. Um, and uh, uh, quite a few of these are about uh, different things like performance of these different features. So okay. let's see here. Um, oh, so the first question is off the forums. Uh, it's actually about the new Blindspace um, map updates here. Uh, do you plan on making a 3D or multi-dimensional blend space? Since right now it's the 2D plane where you can kind of yeah. branch out, but I mean, I can see what they mean. Like theoretically, you might have more than um, four, five, six, seven, eight options of directions you might go in blend yeah. wise. So we wanted to have that in the beginning, mm -hmm. but now we don't really. <laughs> You're tr trying to come up with a different solution for that? Um, so the, it's a cool idea. Like So 3D is cool. 4D, I think we are going too far because visualization Wait. is very difficult. <laughs> 4D? Like you're making like a tesseract <laughs> of blend spaces? <laughs> that's Spacing like it. Yeah. So it is <laughs> wow. confusing, right? So um, the 3D is a cool idea, but the <clears throat> problem is uh, editing is not as simple as you might sound because you have to navigate through in 3D, figuring out which sample point I want, I want to fit it in. So we don't really have a plan for that. We didn't, we never really needed the usage case either. I, there's a case where people want to do like uh, um, direction mm -hmm. and the speed and then also the um, slope. So oh, okay. I've seen those cases, but in generally it's just too complicated to visualize it and seeing the problem exactly. In 2D, it's very simple, right? Yeah. In 2D, you just look through it. I'm like, oh, this position is terrible, so I'm going to have another sample here mm -hmm. to do stuff. In 3D, the visualization and the usability case it, is, it's just, I think it's a lot more difficult. And it's a it's cool project, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that's that useful. <laughs> so we are not sure. We, mm -hmm. are, we don't have the plan. Uh, we used to think about that, but we haven't done that we just use 2D to 2D to do 3D. Okay. Because uh, you know that works kind of like you do one case of this 2D and then 2D and you kind of blend each other. And, and so it creates like a one layer of 3D almost yeah. in that sense. And and I can see what you mean by it's uh it's sort of an edge case where you're going to need that much extensibility. Yeah. Where when you're getting to the point where you're thinking about slope and stuff, then you want to get into like IK or physical yeah. animations to compensate and 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 blend that better. But uh, okay, I can see I can see how uh, yeah. you come to those conclusions. Okay. Um, what is the best way to snap character with animation? For example, when entering ladder or um, caching or oh, catching a ledge. So yeah, I guess uh, I guess this one is um, instead of having that really quick jump that you see like entered volume, uh, play climb animation, and they just like snap to the ladder and they do the really you know sharp climb animation. What's the best way to get them from into that position from standing there? I guess. It all of those are really not that simple. Usually mm. what it what involves is uh, it also involves a character big motion because uh, you, do, you want character to be certain loca you, location to play certain animation, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, first, uh, like uh, in uh, old time guilds, we slowly push the character to the certain location, that yeah. desired location. And from there, we use some IK or do stuff slowly playing the animation. So we didn't really focus on the hand matching and stuff. We more focus on the getting the character to the right location. Mm -hmm. Then playing animation actually works. Yeah. So we did like uh, slowly pushing character to the certain velocity to that location. Once it reached there, then do that. Depends, like if you want to where you care for matching is a kind of problem. If mm -hmm. you are okay with just character location, you can use a similar system. Uh, you have a desired location where that's happening, and then this character is going to slowly get into the target location, and that's going to be just working fine. If you have to like do like a hand IK and everything to work correctly, those are like usually you have extra joint or target points mm -hmm. that has your IK target to it, and that's slowly interpolating that to the point, and then slowly moving that. Um, but it depends uh, really the situation. Yeah, and, and how in depth you want it yeah. to be. How but I think that detail you want to go. I think that definitely answers it because um, yeah, the, at the base amount, if you give them a little velocity, and since um, movement animation is based on velocity, you know, if you give them a little velocity, they'll just naturally create the walk animation yeah. and walk That's up to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And then there might be like a little jump if yeah. you're if you're willing to make that sacrifice, or like you said, you create hot spots on the ladder rungs themselves, and then you create um, sockets on the hands, and then just use. I K to 
connect yeah. those up. You, we used to do like uh, um, if we <coughs> like we used to have a lot of execution animation <laughs> in guilds, mm -hmm. and those things usually have a attach point. So you have a attach oh. point, like, like and on, that's like animated. Like the locust guy's head, and yeah. like that's how you grab him and snap his neck. Yeah, so they have like multiple attach points. You have a attach point to target that's animating correctly, and you have a hand that's following the position. So slowly interpreting into vision. So it involves just some of the thinking of what your target and um, how you wanna approach. But none of them is really simple and global solution for everything. Gen it involves to where is your target mm -hmm. and what's interpolating to. Like, is it your position okay, or does it have to be your <coughs> arm? Does it have to be everything? Yeah, I think so I think the ultimate takeaway from that is there are multiple ways to achieve it. It's it comes down to how you want your game to look and yeah. feel and all that. Um, so yeah, we used we used the points for certain things, like you said, and then other things we just had him kind of slowly velocity himself into the right place, yeah. and use the animations on that. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, okay. Let's see here. Can I make quick time events with sequencer? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can make quick time events with sequencer. So, uh, sorry, that was a uh, unrelated but small one, and I figured I'd just throw that out there. Um, Having seen a talk on motion matching at uh, Nuclei 16, I'd like to ask if that's something that could potentially come to Unreal Engine. Um, are you familiar with motion matching? Yeah, so um, it's a very cool system. It basically, you have a, a database of uh, animations mm -hmm. and with the parameters, and it generates uh, um, output position from input parameters. So it's a cool system. We have we talked to some different developers about that, but we don't have the plan internally. Um, the problem with uh, that system is uh, it relies on a lot of input animation data, so it fits to the certain um, people, but not for a lot of indie people who don't have animations. <laughs> Oh, okay. You need a lot of animations to feed this information. So it's something cool. like a bigger studio might yeah. be interested in more because like it motion. requires a lot of data and motion capture yeah, data. Yeah, you okay. you need a kind of mocap data, so you you want so this is not really a global solution. It's it's cool system and um it's very interesting. It's uh, at the end it just database search search problem. This because you have now so much data and you just have to find it quickly based on what's input and then you just output the push. Okay. So it's it's cool, but yeah. It sounds like a very advanced system. I haven't heard of it myself, so I'll have to um, check it out. Yeah. Um, I can show you, I send you a video. It's cool. Right. Yeah. yeah, please do. Um, what are the plans for animation system in UE4 going forward? Make it more good, better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> summed up everything. <laughs> it's a, it's That's a, our goal. Yay, better. <laughs> I love the uh, I love questions that are a little bit vague. It's like, what's the plans for UE4 in the future? Make it better. <laughs> more yeah. improvements, more features. I think in fixes. short term, we want to do lots of physics mm -hmm. involved. So we, we talk about this a lot, but physics uh, editor is going to move into the animation editor. So you can kind of do the uh, same tool set to do edit the character stuff um, and integrate with the physics. So some of those are one direction. We have different direction of more rich features in the animation editor, so I guess that that doesn't explain a lot, but yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> it gets you somewhere, though. I mean, it was better than uh, than absolutely no answer, which was what they had before. <laughs> um, uh, what's the best way of interfacing uh, the AI with the animation system, i.e. go to exact location, orient, and play a specific animation? Uh, so go to certain location is uh, not really animation problem. No, it's more of the any AI, AI problem. And uh, and uh, we did on um, last Tuesday there was an AI stream with uh, Mieszko and I and uh, and he and I went over a couple of of these things like how to find a location that you want to go to, how to move to it, and uh, we made a montage. But I forgot to duplicate the animation, and so uh, his oh. idol became the use animation. But um, <laughs> So uh, if you check that out, actually, uh, you were the one that explained to me how to make the montage where he puts his hand out and uses an object in the world. Yeah. Um, but um, but best is an interesting thing. Is there a better way you would think of? To do for just custom animation? Yeah, for, for interacting with something, I guess. Um, I mean, interacting with something, um, the, like, uh, 
generally montage is a good way to do it because mm. montage is the one that can be pushed by gameplay. Um, the system maybe you might be interested in doing is like uh, you can generate the system that triggers that animation. So you can have a volume or some kind of trigger that triggers a certain event. And depending on that trigger also can contain the animation data. So you can just, uh, you don't have to embed that information always in the graph. You can actually just do uh, make a system that just triggers when you are in certain trigger volume or something, um, it puts you some information. So like uh, the example is you are, say like you're walking around the fire, right? Mm -hmm. You're walking around the fire and you want them to do like, do kind of like fire blocking kind of oh, animation. Yeah, okay. yeah, stuff like that. Then you can do like a trigger volume. You go in, they, whenever they pass by, they just do this, right? Yeah, so they run that one yeah, uh, montage something constantly. like that. So you can do stuff more like a, um, system along with it, but the uh, underlying is the uh, montage is basically what we use. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a good uh, good answer. Um, let's see here. Aerial app. And this question uh, came in when we were talking about um, the pose, uh, the um, sorry, uh, pose snapshotting. Um, Aerial app was wondering, uh, isn't it better, performance speaking, to use stop movement immediately? Um, and I assume that that's either a node or a function. Stop movement immediately? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the way it was phrased, it looks like that would be a function, perhaps. But um, maybe it's not something you're familiar with. Oh, Aerolap, uh, you mean, I think maybe he was talking about uh, pose asset, pose snapping. Okay. Snapshotting, right? He was talking yeah, about the pose snapshotting. snapshotting. That's, uh, that's when this question came in, is when we were talking about that. Um, oh, why would you stop move? I don't know. Um, oh, I guess what he meant, maybe he meant like just to completely stop everything. Uh, you might have to uh, give like us a little <laughs> more details on that one and we'll be able to get back to you. No, I, um, I guess maybe he was talking more like no any, no update anymore. So just mm -hmm. to freeze the character, oh, stuff okay. like that, maybe. But the case of this one is actually using with regular. Okay. So like uh, you say like uh, this character felt and now you want to blend from that animation, mm -hmm. from that to another animation. That's mm. what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we, if we didn't mean it, maybe he needs a little more yeah, <laughs> detail. Okay. Uh, maybe he means like uh, if, you're, if your character is running, perhaps like the Paragon example is the character is running and instead of using a post snapshot, you know, just oh, freeze character. And yeah, in, in that place. case, it's possible. It, but it might be. Yeah, yeah, but the case we, um, we originally designed this for is for physics. Yeah. Blending with physics. So, so um, I guess uh, coming back to that that question of uh, performance speaking, um, would you say that uh, post snapshotting is that going to be something that's very uh, it's going to cause hitching at all when you do it, or would you expect um, it to to eat anything? Yeah, when you capture it, because <coughs> you have to s allocate the memory and mm -hmm. then assign to it. But using it is not really using it is a quick a pretty uh, light. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Light. Cool. Um, uh, let's see here. Now, did you work on Bullet Train? Because this question is about Bullet Train, and I don't know if you were on that team at all. I'm not on that team, but what, what about it? Uh, well, uh, in Bullet Train, the fingers on the hand, um, how do you separate the animation from the whole hand? <laughs> um, See, yeah, I think you would have to be on that team. So That's why I was no, asking. No, no, um, so oh, you know I can explain okay. some. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually hide a certain joint. Mm. In the our system, like you can hide a certain joint, mm -hmm. and you can spawn something else on top of it. Oh yeah. So you can hide it, but the problem is you ha you want to make sure your skin is rigid, so you are not soft skinned. Otherwise, you are gonna see this pointy end. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, um, if your skin is your skin is so soft, then you are gonna have an issue because your skin want to, you know, if we hi by hiding, all we do is. Uh, our bone scale goes to zero. So bone scale becomes zero. So it just like literally just goes like that and the other one has that, right? But if you soft skin, it's gonna shrink like this. Yeah. So if you don't skin anything um, hard, I don't, so I talked to the team about the feature, mm -hmm. but I don't know if the final version is what I said, but they use a hide bone feature. So hide bone feature lets you hide a certain joint, and yeah. so you can do that. And then that hides like the mesh itself too, or just the... Mesh, and um, and not whole mesh, just that portion that, of the mesh. That, that part of it, okay, yeah. that's, wow, I had no idea that's how they were pulling that off. Yeah, you can do hide bone, unhide bone, but unhide bone doesn't work well if we had a physics access, so... Oh, okay, <laughs> but so anyway. keep that in mind too. 
I had no idea that's how they were doing it. It's actually kind of a clever little trick. Uh, highly recommend checking out the Ryan Brooks Bullet Train stream also for more tricks oh. uh, and tips on how we got VR working very performantly in uh, Bullet Train. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see, this one's a question from about can we get a breakdown of a Paragon uh, character. Um, not on this stream. We don't have one prepared for you. Sorry. Um, I'd love to see this new system with a ragdoll going to stand. Any chance of getting a video or a project example where we could see that happen? Um, so we don't have a, we don't, I don't think Pedagon is not using this system. Yeah, well, they don't ragdoll the characters no, quite yet. But the bullet train is the one using it. So if you look at the Bullet Train game trailer, you might see some. <laughs> yeah, like when the guy gets knocked over, like if you hit him with yeah, something, they'll get knocked over they and they can stand yeah. back up. All right, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so so Bullet Train would be a good example, and, and that's available on the Oculus Store. The, you can go into it, play around in it, and look around, but uh, its project isn't available. Um, and as these things, by the way, as... Um, as these new versions of the engine come online, we'll have new documentation come with them, but uh, we don't make the documentation before the engine version comes out, or we don't put it live, I should say. Um, let's see here. Uh, Shetty29 asks, 2D skeleton animation, uh, how work? 2D skeleton animation? Yeah, how would you do 2D skeleton animation if you would... Uh, so with our like system, it. or if you make a new one? <laughs> <laughs> with ours? Yeah, this is a 3D uh, skeleton animation system I that mean, we're talking about today. So 2D skeleton is, uh, we don't really have a specific 2D skeleton. It's, uh, you just have to use uh, our system to do, just mm -hmm. to remove one of the axes. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, that's exactly what it is. I've seen a lot of people using uh, the skeleton animation system, but they just, they only animate on two axes yeah. uh, using the 3D system. Uh, so it should work just fine. Um, I've seen people use a series of like uh, cards, essentially. Yeah, so it's that's like a, the other option. Yeah, like a, so the skeleton is like jumbled and crazy looking, but it's like a series of cards that makes a person looking oh, that's thing cool. and all that. So um, that should be uh, that should be probably how you accomplish that, I would think. Yeah, if you don't care too much about uh, skeleton, you can actually just use a paper 2D. I mm -hmm. don't know if uh, um, paper 2D just has a sprite of animation. Yeah, so you can also sheets. do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, so those are those are two different options. But yeah, sprite sheets through Paper 2D or um, yeah, just using the 3D system, but you know, smashing it down. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh goodness, we have quite a few. Um, oh, do you plan on adding reroute nodes to the animation blueprints tab? Reroute nodes. Reroute nodes, like in blueprints, and the new oh, material oh. editor just got them. So I'm this sure. cool stuff. Yeah, you know, like little dots you can like you know oh, um, make them bend and curve around stuff. We haven't talk about it but sure <laughs> maybe <laughs> when we have time we can edit that <laughs> it's a it's something to consider uh reroute notes for yeah. it um let's see here uh the ravenock is asking uh animation mirroring uh what would be a recommended way to pull that off in engine uh we don't have that in engine yet so it's uh, hard to do if you are just do about mirroring character that's not hard right mm -hmm. but the hard part is if you want to use animation for this end to use this end, mm -hmm. that's a hard problem. Uh, that's a harder. We like to work on it sometime this year, uh, and we have a plan, but I don't know if we can, get, but that's one of the features a lot of people ask, so hoping we can work on that. Okay, yeah. very cool. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, uh, it's just really nice if you can animate once and then just duplicate. Yeah over um, but uh, for those of you that aren't aware we do have a really great retargeting system so if you have a great animation you like on this guy you can put them on that guy really easy um, so let's see here um, let's see we've got a couple more questions but um, we're starting to slow down from chat um, let's see here oh there it was and I lost it because everything jumped um, oh um, how about importing um, Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, that one's probably not for this. Yeah, actually, we're... Oh, there we go. Uh, any chance you'll provide an example of uh, using root motion... Sorry. I up and lost the question again. Um, any chance you'll provide an example using root motion for NPCs instead of player-controlled characters? Um, uh, do we have a, an example of not player-controlled root motion characters? There... Uh, 
do we not have an example? I don't think we have an example, but mm. it's uh, we use that everywhere, so it should be very easy to provide an example. But it's just for each game to use the their stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so it should it should work with uh, any AI controller. Um, uh, it same thing. It just if animation has a root motion, and if you have uh, either root motion from everything or root motion from montage, you can. It's gonna just do whatever that logic says. If montage has a root motion, it's gonna drive it. If it's from everything, it's gonna drive it. Oh, also somebody asked about root motion with replication in the forum. I think um, there's just question about um, how to rep- if if there's a plan to improve animation replication. Yeah, I think oh, so. I just I replication that? probably. Mm, not on the not on the post for Maybe this network. stream. Maybe I oh, if I missed that, I apologize. Oh yeah, yeah. that. Yep, there we go. Um, I would like to know what the current state of root animations in networked play is. Are there any advancements planned in the near future? Sorry, hostile environment. I must have missed your question there. Uh, so I was going to say, we don't really have that plan. It is a very complicated <laughs> problem. But I wanted to mention it because just somebody asked that question. It, it's, a, it's something that I'm sure a lot of people have asked about root motion and networking. Uh, b- just because we don't really replicate like the in order for us to uh, solve the replication issue, we need to be able to unwind it. We don't have a way to unwind the animation system right now. Uh, we just do uh, animation system runs always based on what's status. Um, so what's state, current state. So we cannot really do that. <coughs> um, we like to explore that part a little more, but we don't have any specific plan yet. So. Okay. So no, no specific plan there, but uh, it's something that's on our minds. Yes, you know. we um, talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. I am John Galt asked, um, let's see here, how to you, uh, apparently I missed this question too. Um, uh, how do you make a bone follow another bone in world location? Um, is that a thing that you can do or plan to do? In world location? Yeah. So we do in the same hierarchy? I, I assume that it uses like the same trend. Like you kind of like lock the transform and like. Yeah, along you can with do it. modify bone, mm. modify bone to. I mean, I guess word space, uh, joint space, in component space, you can just basically make sure this locks to the point, mm-hmm. have offset between. Yeah. I. Yeah, you should be able to just make like I a joint. I should be able like to just to work, it. but um, or word point to follow word point. I'm not sure if that person meant with offset or without offset. Because without offset, it's basically the same position, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I assume with offset, but either way, you just use a modify bone to give the correct offset data into that. Um, I think maybe that person is looking for more like a constraint data, like a Maya, like has a positional constraint. Mm-hmm. So if we want moves, it follows it like yeah. that. We don't have that. Um, just at that we have a look at aim aim uh, aim kind of like a, uh aim offset yeah it's not aim offset it's aim constraint like, oh aim constraint yeah so okay. what it does is you look at just one thing from here the other one is the this moves it's moving with it the other option is like this rotates it rotates with it oh, like okay that. so, so, so there's a like different one part kind of, of constraint yeah yeah okay so but i think maybe that person is asking that but we don't have a, that simple constraint yet um the way you can do is use a modify bone to it's called a transform bone or modify bone and basically you use that to give the right input to the other joint oh we have bone driven controller according to uh, michael nolan he's actually we do have a bone driven controller but that's uh, when you change this transform say like when you change this transform you want to uh, change this guy to move like that. So this joint of this transform is uh, driving some other joint. Oh, okay. So That's it's it's more like a, a situation where, so okay, what's simple? So say like you do this, right? Uh-huh. When you rotate this way, you want to make you this kind of a spa- scale. Up. Yeah. Oh, okay. In that case, what you do is you have this guy, this orientation value to drive the scale value. So that's it then. I, I mean, Michael, yeah, no, but maybe Michael missed what was original question. But yeah, we do have that. Okay. Uh, so we are going to make it similar ish. Yeah, it, it's um, like a different kind of way of driving mm-hmm. a joint. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but it's, uh, there are a lot of things in Maya that are just similar things. And that's why I think people are looking to similar things in engine. Okay. Um, 
Uh, someone here, uh, Nordic Tiger is following up on the um, bone invisibility question. Is there a way to do that but also have it still cast a shadow? Um, not really. <laughs> no, yeah, because it's completely culling that, that section. So yeah, it's not even. Yeah, that transform goes away. So, yeah, so uh, all of that goes away entirely. So, yeah. no, no, it's, uh, it's just not going to be possible I mean, as the as the rendering is set up for that bone um, if you want to do that you need two components one that has that one the other one hidden yeah but that's still tricky because now this mesh is so invisible so yeah because what it is is it's scaled it to zero right so yeah. it's it doesn't even exist at the same, exist in, in the, the same dimensions same. anymore so it couldn't even block light because it doesn't actually exist in that point anymore yeah. um so um and uh yeah so that's um that's probably let's see if I could take one more question here. Okay, I'm gonna take one more question here and then um if you have any other questions, please throw them at the forums, forums.unrealengine.com events section. Um you should be able to find uh the properly titled as is titled down here, uh forum post where you can ask more questions here. But uh Switchmark uh is asking uh, what is the best way to, or is it possible, to make the player collision capsule follow animation by the z-axis? And in this, it's uh, if I was climbing a ladder, I want the collision capsule to stay with the character, which gets us into like root motion um, discussions again. Yes. Oh, so you want you no know, filter certain axis off from for root motion? Uh, I I think so. Maybe that's maybe he does want to filter those. So I I. I saw the other question about root motion the improvement, like uh, for filtering certain axis or mm -hmm. scaling, applying scaling to it. Okay. Um, I think applying scaling is uh, fixed, but um, but apart from that, we had a more plan for root motion improvement. We um, we wanted to do, but yeah, we don't have it yet. We wanna do per axis filtering, mm -hmm. so you can like just say like I wanna only use X Y, not mm -hmm. the Z. Then or you wanna only use Z. Well, then you can just go up, but you never really have to go side away. I don't know. So we talk about that, but we don't have it yet. I can see how it'd be very useful for uh, 2D games, like we were talking about. Just like for 2D, you just kind of knock yeah. out uh, one of the um, one of the axes. So um, all right, uh, I think that kind of gets them in the right direction. At least it's something to consider and think about. Um, but uh, that's going to be uh, the last of the questions for now. Uh, and as like I said, hop on the forums if you have more questions. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. Thank you so much, Lena, for uh, coming on and uh, doing all this last minute. I know that you're really you're, you're doing a lot of prep for 4:15, and GDC is right around the corner, and it's very hectic over here. So thank you so much for making it. No you're problem. a delight. Um, Great. And uh, all right, all of you out there, uh, just a reminder, uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons. They're, you know, all around the images and the videos. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. Make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitch and all of the things. Clint over here was nice enough to remind me to always say this at the end of the outro, that you guys should definitely be following us and liking our stuff. And don't forget, also, we have that stream team. So uh, make sure to hit up the appropriate people. Uh, go to join dot unreal slackers dot org and that's where a lot of people are meeting up too so you can uh, meet up some, make some new friends there uh, and if you're doing a stream and you'd like to be hosted then you can talk to people there about requirements and how to get hosted so uh, thank you all so much for coming out thanks again Lena yeah. and uh, we'll see you all next thank time thank you thank you for coming bye, bye.